signs, signs. Everywhere you go, there are signs. But just who's responsible for that stop sign in your neighborhood or that traffic signal in front of your community school? Let's head to the Kansas City, Missouri Public Works Department Municipal Services Center to get a look at where the magic happens. Every day, an ordinary piece of metal goes from this to this. The Public Works Department Signs and Markings section makes nearly 200 signs a day. The process starts when an employee creates a sign on the computer, then a special printer prints and cuts out the vinyl overlay. Next, the employee hand cuts another piece of vinyl overlay. Both pieces get pressed on top of the metal panel, and that's how we get many of our city signs. Ray Marcel is the area superintendent for the signs and markings section. We make all the signs used in the city right away of the city. Um, there's regulatory signs, there's warning signs, there are informational signs, um, and emergency sign type signs. We average 15 to 17,000 signs a year that we manufacture. This section also creates the street signs you use to navigate city streets. The signs are created with an added safety feature for nighttime driving. The retro reflectivity is the, in, the, in the sheeting itself. All night looks like the lights are on, on the sign. Once the sign is created, workers hammer it into the ground or attach it to poles at various locations throughout the city. With so many signs going out each day, approximately 15 to 17,000 a year, city staff stays very busy and they move fast when the situation is critical and citizen safety is at risk. We can replace a sign within two to four hours of being notified of its missing or damaged. Properly signed streets keep citizens safe and alert, so it's important that the Public Works Department knows if signs are missing or damaged. You can help by calling 311 to report a sign issue. Take a look at this one. Some of these signs are really huge, but it's just a part of the effort the Public Works Department uses to keep our citizens safe on the city streets. As you can see, it's a big job. When you see one of these trucks passing through, you're seeing the city's public works employees in action. Painting the streets is also a task of the signs and markings section. Annually, city crews paint and repaint all pavement markings, including double yellow, white skip, edge line, crosswalk, stop bar, and arrows. Can you tell us a little bit about the truck and the machines that we are using to paint all these city streets? Okay. This is a highway striper. It holds 400 gallons of yellow and 400 gallons of white has a, a thousand pound bead capacity and we're able to stripe for an eight hours day well for one load. We are able with this one truck to get 70% of the city painted in a year. With 6,400 lane miles of city streets to mark, this is one critical piece of equipment. Three Public Works employees ride in the truck during operation. There are two in the back and the driver up front. There's also a backup truck that follows the striper at a distance to keep vehicles away from the fresh paint. Traffic signals are also designed, installed, and maintained by the Public Works Department staff at the Municipal Services Center. In fact, the department currently maintains about 600 signals annually. The Public Works Department values and needs citizen input about neighborhood traffic issues and we're here to help make sure your traffic signals, signs, and street markings are in working order. If you have a street sign or traffic signal issue, the best way to get the city on the case is to call 311 and report the problem. Until next time, I'm Katrina Parker with the City of Kansas City, Missouri's Public Works Department.
Trina Parker with the Public Works Department. Every week, you drag your trash and recycling to the curb, and when you get home, it's gone. Today, we're talking trash with the Solid Waste Division crews to find out what happens when your trash bags leave the curb. It's a typical morning. You set it out, solid waste crews pick it up and throw it in the truck. Generally, you know, in terms of processes, you know, everyone places their bag of trash out to the curb. Um, we like to try and keep that social promises. If you put your trash out by, you know, seven o'clock the day of collection, we'll pick it up um, by the time you get home. The trash bag's journey continues even after it's compacted in the truck. Once the truck is full, the crew heads to one of the city's designated landfills. Solid Waste Division Manager Michael Shaw explains the process. So what happens is the truck will actually just dump it out onto the ground, what we call this, the, the face of the landfill. Um, it's, it's merely just a hole that's been dug in the ground that gets uh, dirt put over top of it on a daily basis. So the landfill operator will take a you know, very large bulldozer type truck um, and kind of compact the trash down. We do that in order to maximize the amount of space in the landfill. Now back to the maintenance workers you see every week picking up your trash. Every day they walk between seven to nine miles, lifting about 14,000 pounds a day. They start around 6 a.m. to get prepared and work through rain, sleet, or snow. It's a very long day for your typical maintenance worker, and it's not always the safest job. Citizens may unknowingly be putting the workers at risk. Solid Waste Supervisor Donald Finley explains. Well, a lot of times, uh, people, they put needles in the bags, and the guys can get stuck by needles or glass, they get cut, uh, they get bleach in their eye, you know, those sort of things. So that would be very helpful if they, you know, would be more aware of what they're putting in their trash. It's not just what you put in the trash. Citizens behind the wheel can also be a hazard to the crews. And you know, there is a proper way to pass. Uh, you just toot your horn, let the guys know that you are back there and you're coming around. And they will just kind of lean to the side and let you on by. These maintenance workers want to make it home safely and you can help by paying attention to them while you're driving and watching what you put in your trash. Here are a few more tips. Put your two bags out together, try to keep the bags neat and clean, and don't forget, Use sturdy bags if you got you know large bags. Make sure they're sturdy um, so that they they don't break when they're being lifted. And what's up with the two bag trash limit? It encourages recycling. If you have extra trash greater than two bags of trash, and you go buy a trash tag at a local price shop or a Westlake hardware store, um, the intent of that is is to reduce the amount of waste we send to the landfill. Citizens needing to use more than one trash bag have to buy a trash tag at their local store, which costs about $2.50 a bag. You know, landfill space is not infinite, I mean, meaning uh, it will at some point be full and can't be used again. Here in the metro, we had four landfills. One closed four years early, and one is scheduled to close soon. Then we'll only have two to use. So preserving our landfill space is going to be very important for Kansas Cityans uh, to ensure that we can have uh, cost-effective services uh, for years to come. Don't forget, recycling is unlimited. We'll talk more about KC Recycles next time. Until then, I'm Katrina Parker with the Kansas City, Missouri Public Works Department. Katrina Parker with the Public Works Department. Today I'm going to show you how doing something as simple as recycling your household plastics can save you and the city money. These blue bins are popping up everywhere, all over the city. They are a key component to KC Recycles, the city's curbside recycling program. On your trash day, you must use a blue or black recycling bin from participating Westlake hardware or price chopper stores. The bins are $9 each, and more than one may be used. Run out of bins? No problem. 
Set your extra recyclables in a cardboard box, paper bags, or plastic tubs next to the bin and we'll still pick them up. The recyclables are sent to a material recovery facility where the products are sorted, put in bins, and shipped off to be reused. The process keeps extra trash out of the landfills, which are filling up fast. I just came down from the top of the landfill, and the view is amazing. The smell, not so good. Before KC recycled, we were generating enough trash to fill up Arrowhead Stadium in less than three years. With KC Recycled, we've been able to extend the life of our landfill. The city encourages recycling. It makes a significant positive impact to the environment, but it also makes the city money. We actually generate revenue on the low end, about $40 a ton. Um, whereas if we go to the landfill, we're paying as much as $25 to $30 a ton to dispose of that trash. Not only does the city benefit, citizens can recycle for free, which means you spend less money on trash tags for your extra bags of trash. You know, in the ideal world, we would recycle more so that we waste less. Recyclables are picked up at the curb on the same day as your weekly trash pickup. Before setting the full bins on the curb, please remove food and rinse out containers. And you can recycle almost anything. It's estimated that about 76% of what you do put in your trash can be recycled. Here are a few of the items you cannot put out for recycling at the curb. Glass, plastic bags, styrofoam, motor oil bottles, paper towels, tissues and napkins, plates or cups. The entire list of what you can and can't recycle is on our website at kcmo.gov. And just because we won't pick it up at the curb doesn't mean you can't recycle it. We have drop-off centers throughout the city. The list of those drop-off sites is also on kcmo.gov. I'm Patrina Parker with the Public Works Department.